Welcome back to No Brush Required. It is Tuesday again. Um, my name is Tamara Grand and I'm going to grab Barbara Reed. Hold on a second. Hello, Douglas. Hi, Jules. Hi, Heather. Hi, Megan. Some friends I don't know. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you doing? My head's cut off. Your head's cut off. Just a second. Hi, here, let me do that just to make you feel better. <laughs> hey, sorry, I'm a minute late. My husband just got off of his big call this morning upstairs and I needed to say, reminder, I'm live downstairs. Don't walk loudly over my head. <laughs> oh, or don't walk naked behind me. Don't walk naked behind me. All of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, Roman, don't walk naked behind me. <laughs> Maybe, yes, or not. Maybe or maybe. A challenge, could he? Because there is, the, he could. He could. Just think of the, the views. I know. <laughs> Through the roof. Viral. How are you doing? How are you? I'm okay. I'm a little chilly. Me too. I've got like a big warm sweater on today. You guys got snow, right? We got some snow flurries and I got my, I don't know if you can see it. Okay, it's backwards. It's Holly, says Holly, Holly. Holly. Yeah, so I'm trying. And can you see my little... Christmas tree yeah. way off in the distance. I can see. So I'm all Christmas fought Christmas fied Christmas fied here. Christmas fied. Okay, it's a new Christmas word. We're making it up. <laughs> I'm very merry, very jolly. <laughs> you are. You are. Um, so before we get on with today, I just want to do a quick little. I know not everybody saw yesterday's reel, but look the first installment of um our sketchbook project arrived and there might actually already be a few little pieces of my work in there you can't tell yet oh, but i've already started on again. it show me a page that you've added something i'll see if i can tell well i showed you the other day so um okay yes i see <laughs> You see? That was easy. That, that was easy. <laughs> no, I haven't added anything to the crazy busy ones yeah. yet because I just uh, opened up the, the the nice the nice sedate side. Yeah. Um and what I'm what I'm really liking to do is I can't even find that cool one that I added. Oh, I really love taking your lines and continuing them with the collage work. So there was these beautiful half outline here and I I continued it with that collage piece. Very so, nice. That's anyways, so you, cool. You can't but see any more. Is delayed, right? My my, the, or your concertina sketchbook apparently has been delayed because of weather. Yeah, I had two par parcels that I got emails for this morning that are in on going to Ontario that are delayed. But um, just another quick thank you, though. Look, uh, along with my package, my sketchbook, I got the most gorgeous little four by four called cocktail time and a few other things including this is on my fridge now but i brought it down trust me you can dance says gin <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you you would love this that's from alora that's from the alora distillery and they had i could have sent you like 20 magnets <laughs> and i could have sent you like so much stuff um it's just it's like gin is their specialty <laughs> they, they make other things too but uh, and they have the best gifts and little chuchkas and i showed you remember i sent you i can't say it loud uh, that picture of the special thing that's going to make me happy yes. with my old fashions yes that's going into somebody's stocking who's sitting awesome. over there who's probably awesome. going to go why am i getting this <laughs> you wanted that not me <laughs> yeah well, I, I'm telling you, you upped the you you've upped the bar for um, stuffing things into boxes next time round. This is going to be fun. It's I know. Like <laughs> it's like uh, Christmas every yeah, day, yeah. <laughs> and it's fun to do it. So uh, hopefully, if if people don't know what we're talking about, they can go to both of our last posts, the reel that you made showing um, the unboxing. Are you going to keep the box and reuse yeah. it? Is that possible? Yes, and I'm going to send you. A, oh we can talk about that the shipping box yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and i you know and um melody one of our viewers was looking for somebody to do a concertina sketchbook project with her and i shared on threads and one of the people i interact with there said oh i wish i could find someone so i paired them up they messaged they're going for it Fantastic. so um if anybody else is interested and you need a little help finding someone you can message either of us and if you don't know what the heck we're talking about 
we started a collaborative sketchbook project based on Sue Bulmer and Sam Waters. And as Barb said, we've got, um, yeah, you got Natalie. And uh, uh, you can see a little reel that we did yesterday that showed the unboxing of the first one. But we are going to pass these back and forth until we decide they're finished. And we're going to add to each other's marks. And we're just going to kind of have fun with it. Cover so. up stuff. And yeah. then I have my, this is my spare. So while I'm you know, waiting for yours to arrive. I'm going to start working on this. More yeah. hot pinks. So you don't know, maybe this will arrive one time. That's a cool idea. Oh, I might have to do that now. <laughs> I mean, well, there you go. Well, we should get to our guest. Um, we have uh, another fellow Canadian artist who both you and I know through different means, and we can explore that. And many of our viewers will know her as well. Her name's Pauline Jans, and uh, she's an abstract artist um, living in British Columbia. And I'm going to grab her so mm -hmm. that we can chat. Let's While see. you're grabbing her, I'm just noticing the so snow squalls have ramped up just outside. It's quite beautiful. Yeah. First snow always is. Pauline. Hello, Pauline. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. Oh, thanks for, for joining us today. We had to reschedule you because you got you got bumped by Jack yeah. Hammergate back in September. <laughs> Sorry. I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. I don't think I could handle that. How did you handle that, Barb? Uh, uh, well, we were lucky because um, we could leave the condo. This was in, in mostly in the summer, August into September. And a friend of mine was very gracious and let us hang out in her backyard, which had a pool. So it wasn't too rough. And um, we hung out by the pool, but there was no art making. And when we were, when Roman and I were here and the jackhammers were starting, you could not hear yourself think. And yeah, it actually no. hurt oh. my Billings, like you know, it was like, like it sounded like it was like these guys were in our ceilings, in our walls, but it's done. The tiles on the balcony are beautiful, and hopefully, we'll never have to live through this again. So I don't want to do that. Yeah, that's that's nasty noise. It surely is. <laughs> Not good. Listen, you guys, you guys are so much fun. You've got so much stuff going on, sending things back and forth. We do. Um, Have you ever done a collaborative project with someone like that before? No, I don't, I don't think, no, I think that would really stand out in my mind. I'm such mm -hmm. a lone wolf kind of worker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I would say both of us are too. So this is a good, this is a good way to kind of get out of our heads, I think. And, and yeah. It's, it's yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I agree with you. I, I, because it's something that I don't do, it'd probably be quite an eye-opening experience. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I must say I'm a little, so Barb included in this, these are some photocopies of drawings that she did in the 80s. So this is vintage Barbara Reed. Vintage. And how the heck am I gonna cover that up? Yeah, that, oh, I don't that's... know. <laughs> now, who says you have to entirely cover it? I know. There are translucent okay. things that you can do. <laughs> rather than yeah. well that would be that would be really confronting i think because you know you think you're afraid to cover your own work but if you see you know how we really love other people's work and we're like oh my god if i could do that and then it arrives in your mailbox and you're like okay thanks <laughs> and then you have with it. i'll just keep, keep that yeah. well like look at it this way tamara if you do cover it up i can make more copies of it <laughs> true so i didn't not send you the original drawing. Oh, <laughs> so I just, just hey, did you send her the original? Because that would be worse. <laughs> no, 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 no. Those, that's not the original. Because I was using, actually, I was using the photocopies to make um, image transfers in, in pieces. And I just never got around to using that one. So I had it. It was in right. my little drawer of goodies. And I happened to pull it out. And I thought, eh, I'm just going to stick the real photocopy on there somewhere. Well, I I think, Pauline, I almost think that you might enjoy it because one of the things that I think, of, when I think of you, um, I think of many wonderful things, but one of the things I do think about is your love of playing with your materials mm -hmm. and exploring and, you know, not being precious, especially when you're working on paper. Um, so something like this might be kind of a fun thing for you. It might be right in your wheelhouse. Yeah, it might be, you know, it's definitely something I'm trying to push myself, um, you know, more into not necessarily collaborative like you're talking about but 
last year before I joined the uh, abstracted art collective uh, you've probably heard of it yeah and um, you know that was like a really big step because I you know it was just sort of like I'm not really sure about groups and things like that and and I did it because I mean I love these artists but also just to push myself out of my comfort zone it, it took a while, you know, like I was sort of quiet in the background. I was, mm -hmm. I'm like that in groups where I just sit back. I want to learn. I don't really want to chit chat and things like that. So that's okay. Except that there's a part of that that's not okay because it's very isolating mm -hmm. or you miss out on friendships, conversations and things like that. So I thought, okay, <laughs> I'll try. So I think this is a good one for me to try as well. It'll probably take a little bit of, you know, greasing the wheels, but I think it's a good mm -hmm. thing to do, really. Anything yeah. that you are afraid of is definitely something to look at. Absolutely. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Um, and I got to back you up. What is the Abstract Artist Collective? Oh, the Abstract um, Abstracted Art Collective uh, okay. was started by by Gloria Gello and a number of other artists in Calgary, about maybe five or eight, something like that. Um, I think they may even have met in um, Art Life. And they started this group in Calgary and they started kind of um, hooking up. They did a, a show, a pop-up show in Calgary in the autumn. And then they uh, opened it up to other artists and you have to apply to get in. Mm -hmm. um, and so now they have artists around the world and it's a group that works together. We meet once a month, um, sharing best practices, uh, both business and we'll talk about, you know, trip ups or whatever. But what's mm -hmm. nice is it's a small group. Um, where you you can get to know each other and you feel mm -hmm. comfortable and confident in intimate conversations about you know exposing your fears about art making or or whatever and um so we've done an online show with artwork.ca that right. just happened in um um october i guess it was and it's just it's just really good i mean but this is something that I have to push myself to, to do too, even get on the calls. We've got one tomorrow. I've got it in my uh, calendar. Mm -hmm. No, it's just, it's really good. It's nice. It's a nice group. And um, so that's been, that was a push for me. That was a push mm -hmm. to just, you know, cause that means I've got to like talk about things that I'm having trouble with <laughs> when I'm used to helping <laughs> others. Right? I was, was going to say, say, is your teacher, like you're a natural teacher. So it's hard to be a teacher and then kind of flip the switch and be not necessarily a student, but not in charge and not guiding the conversation, but being more uh, a part of it. So I get that. I yeah. totally get that. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, even that challenge of, um, you know, groups or being a teacher or being a learner, um, I really believe that when we reflect upon, you know, who we are, I certainly can, you know, sift back and see, I grew up in a really big family. Mm -hmm. So quite overpowering to be in a big family. And there are voices that are louder than others. And then there are voices that will slip back so that you're safe, right? So just understanding where I am from that helps me also go, okay, well, let's just push into the group thing. If you're used to being quiet in that situation, maybe here, find the balance or, or what. So, yeah, yeah. Um, it's been really, really good for me, actually. Met some really people there. So that's just so interesting to me because our experience, and we we have we kind of detoured around an inter an introduction of how we know each other in our backgrounds. But um, I took Pauline's course, her intuitive composition course, a couple of maybe a year and a half ago, which was an online course, and then we had conversations every week, and there was video things to do. Um, and I would never have thought, from the way you present yourself and manage the group, that being up in front of a group was a challenge for you. Hmm. So. Yeah, well, you know, it comes, it's, it comes in different flavors. Like, I don't actually like being in a group. 
I like one on one. I'm kind of like a, I can, it's not, not that I'm really intense, but I can get to the crux of things pretty quick. And it's usually about what's going on in here, right? And, you know, people don't like that in big groups usually, but I just love the one on one because you can get there pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And that's what neat, I find. And uh, I also find that I can draw from that for my artwork as well as even just listening to my intuition. But being in a group that I'm um, facilitating and helping, that's just way easier. I mean, that's just way easier than me being on the flip side and mm -hmm. being helped. I think probably because of how I grew up and, and my journey toward being an artist, I'm a real strong problem solver. I love, so if somebody's got a thing that is tripping them up, my head just goes there immediately. So for me, leading a group that wants to learn is really lovely. It's lovely. It's when, and for me, when I want to learn, I'm a natural problem solver. So I don't naturally gravitate to go get information from others i just find it on my own mm -hmm. right you know i experience mm -hmm. so, but there's so much value in community and, and groups and that's a slice that i realized a year ago or so that i was missing so but yeah you're right as far as you know teaching is concerned i just love that i love it because it really utilizes a couple of my strengths one is my design background but also i'm fairly intuitive and and search and see things quickly within mm -hmm. myself and help others to do the same mm -hmm. what is your background i don't think i yes. know let's yeah, go there like, first of all, <laughs> yeah. you have a big family so what do you mean by that and then what did you do before you got into painting yeah all of that sure well you know it in a nutshell, having grown up on a farm in Ontario, <gasps> where uh, it, uh, the Ottawa Valley, yep. Avonmore, Avonmore near Cornwall, about forty-five minutes, mm -hmm. I think, north west of Cornwall. So we had this huge dairy farm, and I was working at the age of ten. Mm -hmm. I mean, before school in the morning. So anyway, oh. that got, yeah, so that, and it was like full on work, go to school, come home, work some more, dinner, work some more, because we had to milk the cow. Yeah. And then I start my home about 7.30. And so this was the way I grew up, was like work, 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 work. And, you know, it's not like you were shown what to do. I was thrown into the deep end a lot go see that cow she might be calving i'm like i'm trapped. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you're a problem solver <laughs> but, okay that's how i grew up right like lots of responsibility constant work and and i really wanted to do well in school so i did you know it had to be a's and and b's were like Ugh. you know so i worked hard um yeah. I got into after that. Um, I got, got into hairdressing, and um, I went to Toronto for that. And I did that for about ten years. I specialized as a hair color technician. I worked in Yorkville mm -hmm. in a, a wonderful uh, salon there, and um, huh. and I really liked that job. But I also started to notice I was feeling like it wasn't enough, and. Um, so I moved from that across Canada to uh, British Columbia. And <clears throat> within about half a year, I got enrolled in an art class. And long story short, I really always wanted to be an artist. I applied to a school when I was 14 that I saw on TV. <laughs> and, <yeah. laughs> wrote me back and said, you know, you're really great, but you're too young. You're 14. I, that, I, I know, like that just felt like the end of the road. So I kind of closed the door on that, you know, young and, and insecure and on a farm and Dutch immigrant parents and Catholic. I just like when, when, when I got shut down, it was like, that's it. So I was trying to find my way 
by ignoring what I wanted and just, so my parents said, oh, you'd be good hairdresser. So I went for that. Um, when I got to Vancouver, I uh, started to take some courses, which ended up getting me into Langair College Fine Arts. And then they, the teachers there said, you got to keep going. So I went to Emily Carr. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. I love design and I'm kind of practical, right? Work, 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 work. So I applied to sculpture, painting and design. I figured whichever one I get, because Emily Carr's not easy to get into, I'll take that one. Yeah. Well, they accept me in all three. So that- <laughs> Back at you, your decision now. Yeah. So I took design and that was three years and in that I went to Holland and I did a student exchange um, in graphic design and when I popped out I got into design and I did that for I don't know uh, 11 to 15 years I forget but my job was eliminated um, mm -hmm. at the end of it when I was just getting close to creative director and that's when Mark and I moved out here and I really didn't want to get into art, uh, excuse me, design again, because mm -hmm. I climbed a ladder and there was a merger in there that kind of, I, I felt like I was a fallen star, getting so close to where I wanted to be, but it was such a large merger that I just lost my grip and they, they had other ideas. So I didn't want to get into uh, design anymore because I wasn't going to be able to basically make the money I was used to making and mm -hmm. have kind of yeah. responsibility. So we got a guest week going here and that's what got me painting. Um, I needed some art for the walls. <laughs> Very practical. Yeah, practical. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's when, and you know, some things happened that something specific happened in my life where I had a loss and it really, really hurt my soul, my heart. And that made me go deeper into painting. And that's where I started to go to abstract art. And that was tough. Abstract art, you know, it was like, I don't know why I need to do this, but I need to. And um, that's how I got here. Like, and these skills that I got all along have helped me because I figure stuff out. I've worked with computers, I've worked with people, I've worked in deadlines, you know, have to figure things out. I've had losses, um, you know, so these kinds of things have been crucial to my journey because I've had things happen that, you know, I mean, I remember being in hall and things weren't going right. And I was like, almost meditating, praying like, okay, this, this is what I got. This isn't good, but I know there's a gift on the other yeah. side to just help get through because I know it's going to be good. I just have to have an open mind mm -hmm. for this. And this, this kind of attitude has developed through my journeys because I've had a few, um, you know, career goes up and then it drops off and I've got to go do something else. And, and this is the way life is anyway. It's not, it's not easy. Right. It's full no, of it's not. It's not easy. No, no, definitely. But it's what you do with those yeah. challenges, right? And, and you know, you think about the the, the skills and the the um, the lessons you learned as a child in terms of determination, having to solve things, having a strong work ethic. Having a strong work ethic is really important. I I find a lot of artists talk about inspiration and you know waiting for the muse and everything but we kind of know if we don't get in the studio and, and work at it and keep that muscle active that things don't happen mm -hmm. it's it's true and you know it i've surprised myself a number of times and i don't know where that comes from i like calling it gumption but you know i remember in holland when i had this class that was going to teach us about video um, making and i thought that'd be interesting and, I don't know. He just kept on putting off. He gave us a, a class to, uh, uh, sorry, an assignment. And then the next week, ready, we're like, oh, okay, well, nobody's ready. So we'll, you know, next week, next week. And I, I thought, okay, that's it. I went to the dean. And I said, you know what? Give me something else to do. This guy is, I need a challenge, right? So I fired him. And I, I fired the teacher at Emily Carr, too. Like, they just weren't, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, you know what? We're out of here. Like, I'm paying for this. Yeah. I want somebody to push me. Um, so I think the hard work is important to me. You know, 
I don't actually, I mean, I make it a little hard on myself, but I like the hard work because it means that I'm, I'm cutting through fat. I'm getting into the, the nitty gritty. Right. And I believe, I believe in that maybe just because of the way I grew up, right. Things weren't easy. Mm. Well, I can you need absolutely see the connection with, <laughs> I mean, you, you, oh my gosh. I mean, I can't imagine getting up before school and going to the barn and milking the cows and then getting ready for school and then coming home and doing it again. Like that has to inform your work ethic and it has to become part of your DNA that just that kind of, um, routine and being productive and and uh it's wonderful yeah. <laughs> definitely yeah, well, i mean one of the things that you just you just do what you have to do on yeah. a farm like if if you're tired but there's rain in the forecast you're going to work till 11 p.m loading hay so that that doesn't get rained on and then you can go to sleep yeah. like it was just it was just full on i mean it was just full on but yeah you know no, it wasn't an easy upbringing. I certainly didn't learn how to play. That's for sure. <laughs> maybe this is my maybe adult. That's why you play now. Maybe that's this is coming out in your art practice. You're you're because you are very playful and you're always sharing some really cool things that you're doing with really unusual tools. And this is your play happening now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's one of the reasons why I decided not to have children because I I was an adult way too early and yeah. i think that i knew that in my 20s it was like you're just never going to get there if you take more of this this responsibility on mm -hmm. so it was very clear to me you can't do this i don't even want to and and uh, no judgment about anyone who has children mm -hmm. it, it's just that i just i needed to play <laughs> i needed yeah. to find yeah. you know something else about myself right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I must say one of the other things I just I love about the way you share your work is you sh you're very seems you're very willing to share those vulnerabilities and the explorations because a lot of times the posts that I see on Instagram when Instagram shows me your work yeah. posts they, they're open ended questions that you're asking yourself but then putting them out there and letting us ask them of ourselves as well and I find that um, I find that really really helpful as someone who's who's still learning a lot about myself through my art um, and how to approach myself, my, my time as an artist. So keep that up. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. You know that I also have a, a mentorship yes. um, that I lead artists and uh, lead them in really asking those questions. All these artists that are in the mentorship did the intuitive composition course that uh, you did Tamara. But that mentorship, of course, we talk about art and design and whatnot, but that other side is so important. And when we do our art reviews where there are one on one just between the two of us, but the, the group can be a part of it as well, um, they really do appreciate when I ask them those deeper questions about mm -hmm. themselves. And I, you know, it's kind of a, a fine line to walk. You want an artist to uh, practice their, their craft, but also be aware of things on the inside that are getting in the way that makes it mm. difficult mm. to push forward, like making changes in your work or falling in love too soon is often about a lack of confidence or self-trust mm. rather than mm -hmm. knowing that it's okay to lose that or you can find ways to keep it with photos you know yeah. if that's the only thing right so yeah. um i think that's always going to be a part of me i think that probably a pretty sensitive person and i knew that pretty early on and i had to figure out how to manage that sensitivity in, you know a busy world and a big family <laughs> you know that sort yeah. of thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you get into um, designing these courses and putting yourself out there Because uh, with your online courses and you have a number of them? So how did that start? Yeah, thanks for asking that, Barb. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, um, I started to have a lot of artists reach out to me and ask me if I did coach or do courses and I didn't. And I thought, well, 
I mean, how would I even do that? Well, I, I, um, there were so many people that I just started to create a, a, an email list. And what I saw from those messages was a lot of curiosity about design. And mm -hmm. so I thought, you know, I'd really like to do that. And I actually kind of started making these practice videos just for myself, mm -hmm. right? I think when COVID happened, I started to get more practice and I wanted to, no, I started one-on-one -on -one coaching for okay. 2019. And that was with Zoom. And it was, you know, hour long sessions. And then whatever they needed, I would make a video for them to help support them in what they were running up against. Right. And so I was getting practice with making yeah. videos that were specific. But in, in the, um, in that i was thinking you know i've always wanted to share this uh let's just practice a bit more on what that could look like so i did a couple of fake videos on you know a design course yeah in fact then we uh we sold our house and the uh guest week business and that was great because i i really did need more time for my art making and when we got here i just you know there was this voice inside of me that was like you know just do it like do you don't know what you're doing you don't yes. even know what about just do it so i just made a trailer and said you know who'd be interested and there was a whole bunch of <laughs> i thought oh my god oh, okay. now, I, now i have to do it <laughs> i've done it now <laughs> and i tell you it was so stressful but it was because i didn't know how to get what was in here and here out into the form that would help others so that was what was the most stressful was do i write it out do i videotape do i need sticky notes do i need chapters yeah. you know like, like i tried so many different things and I, and i ended up making this amazingly amazingly large course in about two and a half months and um so it was great because the way I made it, you can move things around and tweak and, and whatnot. And of course, I've gone into it again a few more times to make it better. But I just always wanted to do that, I think, around 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, it really started to, I saw that it was necessary for yeah. something that was needed, you know, because it kept being asked that. Um, how I made that thing is beyond me because it's a map. <laughs> yeah, it's big. Yes. It is. It's big. And I mean, COVID I it hit right. So, I would think if you had done the work, you did the work before COVID hit, and then you've got it. Is that when it really took off? When we were all isolated and well, in to... twenty twenty one. So we'd had a year of COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. and um, yeah that certainly didn't that certainly wasn't a negative as far as no. um hungry people that's for sure i think there were about 85 people who signed up the first one yeah mm -hmm. uh, i ran it twice the first year and another 85 uh yeah. signed up which was really great um it's a really good course and of course i've added more to it and of course i'm always learning too and you know lucky for my mentorship members because they kind of get downloaded what i'm learning so they're kind of real time getting stuff from me but i want others to get it too you know because i'm getting clarification on things that can help others as well mm -hmm. so it's like okay get that in there without it being 50 hours <laughs> <laughs> well that's the challenge too right i mean because everybody's balancing wanting to do your do a course with the other things they have in life and, and i found you know you had so there was so much value in that course that it probably could have kept me busy for a full year just because every time we learned something you didn't just provide one way of understanding you provided multiple ways of understanding a particular concept and I couldn't always I couldn't always do all of them in a week I would kind of I would watch all the videos and be like okay this week I'm gonna work with um, you know the sticks or something I'm not giving anything away but you know like that's the video that's what I'm gonna use to play around with this concept because I just I couldn't fit it in, I couldn't mm -hmm. fit it all in so that means that's good because people can revisit 
and get something out of it a second time or a third time even. Yeah. Well, I've got members that have taken it three, four times. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I think too, when I see things that are another way of looking at it, I want to share that because not a, you know, everybody thinks like me or sees what I see. Yeah. So if I can find another angle, um, maybe the idea will resonate then. And I think that's important. I mean, be overwhelming, I'm sure. And you know, I ask, I ask the artists, like, can I, do you guys think I can take this out? And they're like, no, no, don't take that out. That's, I don't know. I am going to add another week to uh -huh. it this year because I just, need it but then i'm adding more content too did i help any i don't know maybe I'm <laughs> add I'm so are you running it how many times a year are you running this course now well uh what so last year once and so 2024 i'm running it in uh january but then i have this other thing that's niggling in my head that something that really important that I created that turned to, you know, all the writing and exploring and experience. Yeah. It's, it's a course, you know, it's so helpful and it really moved the, the dial for me. Mm -hmm. So that's something as well. And I want to make sure that I leave space because I think it would be a really, um, not, another level up for artists. Um, you know, if they just want to move their work more. Right. Okay, I got so it. It's Oh, so is registration just... open yet for in, for January intuitive composition? Is that coming no, soon? You're... There's going to be an early bird special, and that will probably um, open up somewhere in the middle of December and run, okay. run that. Yeah. And then uh, that, I think it'll run for a few weeks. I think that I closed that early bird special about a week before or so. I can't remember what I did last year. Um, yeah, and so you know, anybody listening who who um, husbands, I actually had someone reach out who Ooh, wanted Christmas to gift. Get gift. So I had gift certificate. Mm -hmm. Well, like that would be a fun, surprise. Right. um, mm -hmm. that's fun, fun to read that email. Yeah, so I'm I'm excited about this because of the new content because I know it's just another level of helping, which I think is, you know, when the penny drops, I just think, you know don't you get thrilled when the penny drops you guys like when you oh. figure something out oh. i mean you might have heard like 10 times and it just didn't quite make no. it all the yeah, way didn't in. make it through didn't make it into the cerebral matter i have to ask after listening to all this what is a typical day for pauline jan <laughs> you get well, up I at do. 2 a.m <laughs> milk the cows <laughs> milk the cows <laughs> oh like what's your typical day typical <laughs> honestly day. Yeah. Okay, day. There's a lot of getting into Instagram just to check things and whatever. I wake up quite early. Um, I don't like that. I do wake up several times a night, and I try to get back to sleep. Um, but I do wake up around <laughs> five. Yeah, yeah. I've got a game that I play to help me get back to sleep, which is working. If you're interested, I'll tell you about that later. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That okay. Would be good. Morning's pretty cool. I try not to get too much into work right away. I used to be, you know, 6 a.m. I'd be working Instagram, making the post, answering questions, blah, blah, blah. But I realized I got to create some more balance because I was draining myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so morning's lovely with breakfast and coffee with my husband. We always walk our dog um, and he's a high maintenance dog. So we have to go far away from people. He doesn't like other dogs. It's quite a stressful walk if we don't choose properly. Mm -hmm. And um, so when we're back about 10 or so, that's when I start working. Um, it's usually the admin stuff, emails and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And but, uh, lunch. And then I usually spend the rest of the afternoon in the studio, have dinner with my husband, and then back in the studio again till probably about 8 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And we always end the night with watching. Um, you know, a mystery, um, some mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, I also, my reading is always for learning. So mm -hmm. reading is not a break for me. It's studying. That's why I watch movies. So I actually yeah. can just be fed 
but it, you know, yes. and it has wash to over you. Yeah. 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 As story. If I don't like the acting in it, I'm not watching it. Yeah. Don't impress me or forget it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's my typical day. And you know, it's, it gets bumped around. I mean, I've had a lot of admin in the last couple of days and mm -hmm. I don't, I like it because I feel like the stress go down because I, I get organized, but I long to keep going in my creativity as well. But that break actually, because I freed up my mind from getting admin done, I'm usually mm -hmm. better for it, but I will resist. I'd rather paint all the time and not have to email and website updates and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yes. I find it easier just to batch job that to actually have the bookmark on the on my desktop you know it's two hours on a monday morning and that's when i'll go in and make images and upload and write and then try not to have to do it interspersed in the rest of the day because it just sucks your energy if you're constantly doing that as you go right yeah it's interesting I had a big comment go by but did you catch that big comment no, oh, what it was really gone. it's gone it's comment again now. if you'd like yeah, it was a big one about uh, the, their, how they kind of work their day through. So I well, <laughs> wish we could save those. I don't, um, I don't pencil in the, the admin stuff. There is like, there's, I do a lot of stuff by feeling, even when mm -hmm. I wear shoes to hike. It's like, do you want to be on the top? of a mountain or do you want a flat so you can see over the valley or whatever it's not even like how my legs are feeling you know yeah and mm -hmm. it's the same work i might have i mean the other day i went i had about 200 unread emails so don't panic those were sent by me ideas oh. look <laughs> oh. at that yeah I'm sure 150 of them were from me. And I thought, you know, you need to handle this. Like, get it on a document, <laughs> right? <laughs> we'll lose stuff. Yeah. So, but, but it was the pressure of this is ridiculous. And then I was happy to sit down and do that because, but I, I, I love that you can do that, Tamara. I'm just a bit rebellious that way. If I want to play in the mud today, that's what yeah. I'm going to do. And I, that's got that's because of the way that I didn't have much of a choice when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. and I, it's interesting. I think the most important thing is finding what works for you. So whatever your organization system is, however you want to divvy up your studio practice with the admin side of things and your social media side of things and the other things you do in life, just figuring out what works for you so that it takes the, it takes the decision making and the work out of every day. Do you know what yeah. I mean? You're not worrying and trying to figure it out. You just, you, you know what works for you. When's your creative flow? When are you most mm -hmm. in creative flow? Like there's no point in fighting that. And no. if your best time for making, if your best time for being creative is in the morning, the worst thing you can do is spend your morning answering emails. Yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 I, you know, I was thinking about it this morning and I often think about it. Why don't you just pick one day and it's like, no, no, it's, I know it's not going to work. It's yeah. not. Yeah. Well, it's just, it sounds like you need variety in your day. So if you were just doing one thing all day, I don't think that that suits you. I'll only do that if, it's in, if I'm on a roll, and if I back out of it, I'll lose my place. You know, like when you're, hmm. when you're backing up data and organizing it on your backup drive, that's something I'll just keep going, even though it hurts my back. Um, I don't want to lose my spot. Like there's a thinking that that's going on there. And, uh, but yeah, as soon as the, as soon as that, it's almost like a balloon. Once I get that pressure down, it's like, oh, okay, I can go play again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So maybe what are you working on? In, what are you working on in your studio right now? Can you, can you share with us what's, what's currently um, oh, behind you on the wall? Yeah. You know, I've got some pieces up there i think those are all my, my happy pieces um well over the summer i have been doing a deep dive into how my work feels and how i want it to feel mm -hmm. and i really had to dig around about that and i'm not finished digging but the thing is what i ended up doing there's sort of work and development 
in a couple of with a couple of different ideas so and i don't i'm not limiting myself except for allowing myself to explore those ideas there's about three of them and so it's almost like i'm doing three different series at once mm -hmm. and i'm just i'm just flowing with it if a painting was going down one road and now it starts going down that fits this other series i just go with it because i'm learning things about myself or what i want to express or maybe how i'm using material and what that makes me feel by using it that way um so i'm working on these various theories that are kind of teaching me a new way of movement into my art and i think that as i do that it's interesting because there are some very peaceful pieces mm. which i was really craving but there are also some other pieces that i'm using materials in different ways and really wanting to see what they can do for me on the canvas but also in here like why is that why is the way i'm using that feel right like is it yeah. resonating with the kid that made mud cookies and putting them in the barn <laughs> windows to dry you know like yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of spaciousness necessary which is beautiful because i'm not putting a lot of deadlines on myself other than just keep working and of course you know, if a piece keeps on going around in circles, it's either push it or put it aside because I do want to finish pieces because, because even that, you know, if you work on too much and you don't finish, you're kind of missing a bit of the boat there too, right? It's, you got to okay. keep going. Yeah. You have to work through the hard parts. And I, that's one of the things I've really, really been working on this year too, is getting to that point where something is 80% done and, not calling it done forcing yeah. yourself to sit with it and and figure out what you need to do to really push things to their completion and that's hard it's mm -hmm. but I, I love leaving something and because it's for me it's a respect of where i've gotten to mm -hmm. but not pushing it to somewhere where you, you know you haven't even allowed yourself to discover so yeah. you can pause pause right. because that's that painting one day could be in a week could be in a month you can look at it and go oh i know what i want mm -hmm. yes you. and you'll yes. just go in and try and you might even lose that painting and you don't care because it you have some, yeah. yeah so i love it's that funny. Yeah, it, it's funny how, because I found that with a couple of pieces where you're like, okay, I can't touch it anymore, I can't touch it anymore. And then you do put it aside for a while. And then one day you go in, it's like, I don't love you anymore the way I did. I'm going to. <laughs> it's like you break up and then you make it better. And it's, it's, it is, it's like a little switch in the brain that just gives you permission. I do that best at night when I'm not at my most creative, but I'm kind of at my, what the hell, just do it. <laughs> and um and then walk away and then look at it in the daylight and see how that feels yeah. so do you work late into the night you guys no nope. i'm an early early to bed girl if i told you what time i went to bed you would like laugh but i'm i'm up really early in the morning so well, yeah you're constrained too because of the way your studio is set well, up and that it's in your yeah. kitchen so you have to kind of close up shop for the evening and then to open things up again would be a challenge, right? Well, artificial light, everything looks different. Mm -hmm. So during the day, I have natural daylight all day, even on a day like this, which is kind of overcast and snowy. Um, but at night, the light is harsh. But again, if I'm going to make something major, I'll do it at night for whatever reason. The light is harsh. I can't see as well. It doesn't seem to matter, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. The only thing I do in my studio after dinner is the stuff that needs 12 hours to dry and I might be tempted to touch it if I do it during the day and I'm not patient enough to wait. So, you know, gloss medium coats, varnish, that sort of stuff happens in the evening when I can lay everything out and I can walk away and I'm not tempted to put my finger on it to see if it's dry. Oh, that finger! <laughs> what is it with that? Oh, gotta touch everything. Huh? What is with and that? You gotta touch it. You gotta touch it even no. when you don't. Don't walk touch away. it. Walk away. Walk away. I know. I mean, 
<laughs> or you, you know, you're, you got it going, you let it dry, and then you're like excited to do the next thing. And I'll just avoid that one side of the painting. And then your finger gets in. You're like, <laughs> I'm impatient. I can't wait for, if I'm working on something, uh, say that mixed media piece and I'm doing gluing thing that things down I can't wait mm. and if there's tape involved and I have to like you know get out the hair blower and start dry I cannot <laughs> wait and then I have like ripped tape off and it'll pull off something that's underneath it and then I'll go to myself okay there you've done it again I think it was but I think it was meant to be that way like there's a part like on the concertina sketchbook that I sent you the woman with the hat Take a look at the, there's like, it looks like some of the paper got ripped off. <laughs> you you off. meant it, right? You I meant, meant it. it. Okay. Pauline. I was doing something and then I thought, oh, frick. And then I thought, no, I quite like that. Oh, well. You <laughs> know, so sometimes I'll wreck something, but it's not really wrecked. It's actually better. Yeah. But as artists, I think that allowing not to happen and let going of control it you know yeah it's a bit of a bummer but the thing is you can see beauty in it and keep moving forward and 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 that is part of it like it's part of you you're impatient you're gonna have torn yeah. paper that's <laughs> yes. actually it's an actual authentic representation of barb right you're gonna have to have torn paper in there you know what i like and like you know distressed stuff that didn't start out distressed <laughs> yeah. you know quilters i like to remind myself when i make a mistake on something that i didn't intend that quilters um traditionally will often purposefully make a mistake as a reminder to themselves and everybody else that nobody's perfect well there oh, you I go know. isn't that interesting yeah yeah so, so yeah no none yeah. of us are perfect no yeah none of us are perfect and I, I actually love that I think we want to control things but then we want to lose control so to me it's that fine line between the control to the happenstance oh my god everything just blew up over there but it works <laughs> you know yeah and I think you can sense that when you look at something where, where the artist has lost control they've just let the materials do their thing and then something beautifully precise and sophisticated nearby that just makes it, you know, that yumminess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the nice thing about losing control, which you don't really want, like, you know, let's Not face 100% it. Not 100% of the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The nice thing about losing control or making a mistake or whatever is that you can now pivot. And when you pivot, you're bringing your creativity back in. That's solely yeah. you, like you made it before, something natural happened you know the tape ripped out so nature or you know whatever came in and did its thing and now you're going to respond and so it's really it's 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 your opportunity to just keep going and expressing your ideas and that's that's that because it's bigger than you then it's actually bigger yeah. than you as something else came into your work and now you're working with it and if you yeah. controlled everything then then nature couldn't come in because yeah. you're planning it all. So, well, and that's, that's cool. It is. And yeah. think about the times when, for me, and I, I bet you guys are the same, the most excited you get in your studio practice is when something completely surprising and that something that just makes you feel it's, it's beautiful and you would never have thought to do it on your own. And it just happened. And the fact that you can recognize that and enjoy mm -hmm. what that feels like is, that's what drives me when I'm in the studio. Yeah. I call those magic moments. Yeah. I'm always looking for those in my work. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Those are the best. Like, I think this is one of the things that I really enjoyed since the summer of of experimenting and exploring a lot. And I think it's one of the reasons why I really love materials as a place to launch from. Mm -hmm. Is if I play with them as opposed to try to get them to do something for mm -hmm. me, I'm going discover so much more about the material, me, my response to it, and even even the response of like, oh my God, I don't like that. Yeah. Do you know what happens? Yeah. If I turn and get a rag to rub it off, when I turn back, I actually like it. Yeah. How can you think one way, one second, and have a break, and then see it in a new light? It's the space that we need mm -hmm. to have a 
different mindset. And I love it when that happens. I call mm -hmm. it going, I call it going painting blind, mm -hmm. where I can be painting and I cannot, I mean, I can see my painting, but I can't see my painting. Yeah. You know, like, it's like, I can't see you anymore. And I can flip it around and you just get to that point. So you're right. You need the space to walk away, you know, for a few hours, even the next day and come back and then you can see it again. It's really, it's like your brain just starts to, yeah. it sees what it wants to see, even what's not there. I feel like yeah. that's a life lesson yeah. too. Yeah. Not just walking go. away from your painting when you make a mistake, but so many things that we're reactive to in our day, right? Yeah. There's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot of people we interact yeah. with. It's so easy to just react and respond immediately. And of course, if we walk away and think about things, we often come back with a different mindset. And a cooling off. Like you just need sometimes, here we, look how deep we are today. But it's true. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I, it's so true. You just, you just need the space, however that may look. You know, a change of scenery. Go do something else. You know, go work mm -hmm. out. Go see a movie. Watch well, the replays stuff, of Friends stuff, over and over. Stuff that happens in our head and anything happen in our minds that's mm. the beauty so mm -hmm. if if you can disengage from what's going on in your mind to make space for something new to happen um i don't know if you guys know this guy michael singer wrote the book the untethered soul yes and Ooh. living untethered and i like the second one it wasn't quite as chewy um mm -hmm. But it's a beautiful reminder of how you create stories in your head that you actually, like, you're influencing yourself. Yep. Maybe not, not even the way you want. No, so, often it's negative. Often it's negative. Yeah, so know that. You can actually back off of that, come back in with a fresh perspective. This is in life, relationships, your art. Um, whether a gallery accept or not, mm -hmm. what you know, as soon as we stop making up stories and just mm -hmm. be open, there's you, you know, what what I love is I like making up stories that are going to make me feel good. So instead of one that makes me feel like, oh my god, like they haven't emailed me back, it's been three days, I'll just make up a story saying, oh, they were so blown away by my email, they're just wondering how they're, they're like should. speechless. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they don't know what to say. Oh, oh, trying to get some help to write a really good email. I'll lie to my. Yeah. I feel good. Well, it's a, <laughs> yeah. I think that's reframe. Yeah. It's a reframe. Sometimes reframes are important, right? Okay, clock watcher Barb. I'm terrified we're gonna lose this. Okay. It is just let word at the less than two minutes until this we lose it. Oh, <laughs> Mark, but it's been so good it has talking. Been. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. This feels like it was a very free form. I don't even want to call these interviews anymore because we no. just seem to have such wonderful the conversations. Yeah. Um, I, we really appreciate your time and your wisdom. And I'm going to include in the show notes uh, links to your socials and information about your course so people can get themselves on the wait list for January. If you're looking for a fabulous online course with lots and lots of content, juicy content. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, Pauline. thank you, Pauline. Oh, it's, it's, this was wonderful. Wish we could talk longer. We'll have we'll to do, do that on the song. Part two. We can do, we'll do part, part two, two another time. <laughs> All right. Love's great. Have Take a great care. rest of the everybody. Thanks for watching. Mara, we'll look what arrived while we were doing this. Say no more. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>